What's cooking everybody? Dave Altizer here with my personal channel and today we are going to be reviewing the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 with optical image stabilization or with uh, what do they call it? OS. Welcome to the Sigma series. So I'm calling this the Sigma series because I now have a relationship with Sigma and I want to just make that clear to you before I begin talking about this. And also, if you want to see more reviews on different types of equipment that I use on a daily basis as a YouTuber and a filmmaker, then please hit that subscribe button and enable that bell notification so that you're notified every time I post here on this channel. So, Sigma has been making wonderful art series lenses for a while now. I've used the 18-35, to I owned that lens. I also owned the 50mm f1.4 for a very long time. And I don't have them anymore, but I've used a lot of the Sigma art lenses over the years. And man, they're so nice. They have really done a really good job on optimizing their glass the price performance, the just overall image quality is really next to none. I mean, it's up there with the Canon L series line, the GM line from Sony, and the Gold series from Nikon. And it's really amazing to see a third party manufacturer doing lenses like this. And I hope to get more lenses in the future because I just think they're so fascinating, especially for the Sony mount on the A7 series. We can put E-mount lenses now. They're making autofocus E-mount lenses. So I wanted to try this lens because honestly, I saw MKBHD using it for his autofocus review of a Tesla, I think. Um, I saw him using this lens on a 1DX Mark II and I was thinking, hmm, that is a good like all around lens for 4K on these cameras. Now there is a little bit of a crop on the 4K mode with this camera. So it makes that 24 millimeter more of like a, eh, like a 28, a 30 millimeter roughly to 80, 85. Um, but this camera is big and heavy and it doesn't have image stabilization on the sensor. So I really need to get stabilization from the lens. And at the moment, the only option really is the 24 to 105 from Canon. They do have a 24 to 70 F4, it's a little bit smaller, but it's F4. And on a full frame body, you really wanna optimize that depth of field and that low light. I mean, this camera isn't the best in low light. It's pretty amazing, but having F2.8 to me is kind of a bare minimum for a lot of things. So I was pleasantly surprised. I thought this lens would end up being bigger than it actually is. On the pictures, it looked huge. I've seen the... Uh, other lenses from Sigma before, and they're pretty massive. They don't really hold back on the size. They really just make it as big as they have to to get the performance out there. A lot of the Sigma art lenses are really fast, so they're pretty big and hefty. And this one's no exception. It is big and heavy, but it's not too bad. Like, when it's compacted like this at 24 millimeters, it's really no, you know, bigger than your standard 2470, if anything, smaller. Um, I don't have the Canon version to directly compare it to, but as you can see here, I mean, it's as, not even as tall as the body. Yes, this lens is fairly heavy, and on a small camera, this would get a little unwieldy, but on a camera like a 1DX2, or say like a Canon 5D with a battery grip, it balances perfect. Like. With this lens on this body, like, it really doesn't feel ridiculous. In fact, for the last month now, I've been using this lens for mostly photography for my personal life. Like, just taking pictures of my son, of our travels. We went to California, my wife and my son, we went to the beach for the very first time with him. He's only 10 months old, so he's a little scared by the water. And this has just been a really versatile lens. There were even moments where a little bit of rain was coming down, just drizzles, nothing crazy. And I didn't fear because this lens does have weatherproofing right here on the sides. 
I did a very extensive review of this lens and there's tons of like back and forth photo examples, very nerdy kind of specs and stuff on the Kinetika channel. So check that out, link in the eye icon above. If you wanna see a really, really in-depth review, I'm just giving my overall thoughts here using this for, you know, for me personally. It balances well and the image quality is good. Now here's the, the caveat and the issue that I've had with this lens. If I'm not shooting at between 35 and 50 millimeters, there's a lot of vignetting going on in the image. Now, I'm not really a photographer, so I don't really spend a lot of time in post in Lightroom. If you wanna get rid of that vignetting, of course you can fix that in Lightroom, but, and it's pretty easy. It's, it's really not that hard. But because I'm mostly, just taking pictures of my kid and just on vacation. I've been shooting a lot of JPEGs recently and just uploading those straight to Google Photos. And that's my workflow right now is I just upload everything to Google Photos. It's completely unlimited backup. The vignetting kind of made me a little upset. I also found on my copy at least that at 24 millimeters, it had a really hard time focusing. Like it seemed like every single image was soft at 24 millimeters. And the comment section on the video that I did for Kinetika, a lot of people suggested that I get the USB dock and that would help like adjust the back focusing and some of the issues with the softness on this lens. So if I had that, I would, but Sigma didn't send it to me. This lens does have, um, it has autofocus, but it's also got optical image stabilization, which you can turn on and off here. And I found it to be really useful for photos. Um, for video, it's there, but it's nowhere near the performance of the Canon series of, cam uh, of lenses like the 24-105 f4 or the 16-35 uh, f4 with IS. I love that lens. It's a great Canon lens. And um, I was a little disappointed by that because I was really hoping to use this for video, but where it really shined a lot for me was when I would go to 50 millimeters and take pictures. The images coming off of this lens with this camera at 50 millimeters were next to none. Like, really truly amazing. And having the ability to go to 70 and having the ability to go to 24 with that vignetting aside, it was just really versatile and really great. Also, we used this lens almost entirely for the Kinetika channel. We used only this lens for all of our video shoots and because this camera doesn't have autofocus for video, we were shooting all manual focus here with the focus ring. And it was great. The focus ring is nice. Um, it's smooth. It is behind the zoom ring. And I asked a Sigma engineer why that is. And he said it's purely physics. Um, in order to make it this size, they had to make that compromise and put the focusing ring behind the zoom ring, which is a little backwards. Usually on zoom lenses, the zoom is in the back, the focus is in the front, but you know, it's kind of, eh, who cares? Like, it's not that big of a deal. You get used to it. I got used to it pretty quickly. This does have a large filter thread. It's 82 millimeter. I only have 77 millimeter filters. So I only used that when I was shooting in either the crop mode. Overall, the image quality on this lens is just fabulous. The 50 millimeter, again, is really the best sweet spot on this lens that I found. And if I had that USB dock, I'm sure all the way through the range, the focus would be better, um, but I don't think it would get rid of that vignetting. When I was talking to an engineer from Sigma, one of the things that he said is there are compromises that are made with this type of lens because people want this image stabilization, because people want to shoot wide open at 2.8, you're not gonna get fully optimal shots all the time. So if you're getting vignetting, go to F4 and it pretty much goes away. This lens to me feels like a niche, like a, a niche, a niche, niche, niche. This lens feels like a niche lens. Um, if you need that image stabilization, if you need 2.8 and you want the versatility, then this is really your only option for both Nikon and Canon. Um, 
if you're excluding the Tamron, of course. I don't know if for me, if having the image stabilization is worth the compromise. I think if I were given the choice between this or a standard 24 to 70 to eight without image stabilization, if it has, if it had better vignetting performance, um, I would probably still go with the non image stable, stabilized version. At the end of the day, I really don't think that the image stabilization on this lens is worth some of the compromises that you have to have with just plain physics here. I think if you want the perfect image quality every time, definitely stick with the primes. If you're on a crop sensor camera, the 18 to 35 one eight really performs really, really well. Um, if you're on full frame they, and you want to zoom from Sigma, they do have the 24 to 35 F2. F2 zoom, oh my gosh, it's just insane. I would stick with those lenses from Sigma. No offense to Sigma here, I, I got this lens because I was curious about it. I hadn't really seen a lot of reviews on it and so I just wanted to get my hands on it. I've totally just fallen in love with the system, but there's a lot of compromises here in terms of image quality. And if you're not willing to do the post-processing with your stills, and if you're not shooting in a crop mode, uh, like I typically do for video, um, and you're shooting full frame, you're gonna have a lot of vignetting in your videos. Um, that I would stay away from this lens, and that's not a knock against Sigma, because this lens really is fairly small for what it can actually do. I mean, that's it, all the way zoomed in, then all the way zoomed out, it's really balanced. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, I hope that I covered enough for you guys. I think if you're in the Sigma ecosystem already, say you own a, the 5114, you own the 3514 or something, and you need kind of an all around zoom lens, sure, I mean, this is a great option because if you want the versatility, use this lens. It's small for what it is with that image stabilization. If you go to F4, it really gets rid of a lot of the vignetting and the issues with that. Um, and then pick up your Sigma primes and then they match perfectly with this lens as far as the color science, the weather sealing, things like that. But if you're starting fresh and you really want just a good all around zoom and you're on a Canon, I may lean more towards the 24 to 105 version two from Canon. It's a thousand bucks. Um, the image stabilization I found is really good for video and photos. The vignetting is not as bad as this one is. Um, you do lose a little bit of that aperture, but but yeah, I mean the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 with optical stabilization is great if you're willing to have some of those sacrifices and understand where to use the f2.8, which is from 35 millimeters to 50 millimeters, by the way, that's the best that I've found. But then when you're doing wide angle or zoomed in, stop down to f4 and you have you know a good image at that point. Thank you so much, Sigma, for letting me review this. Hope I wasn't too uh, brutally honest about some of the compromises there. I understand that that is necessary when you're trying to build something as small and compact and versatile as this lens, and that's okay. I just want people to understand that this is not a perfect 2.8, 24 to 70 image all the way through. Um, and the image stabilization is not designed, it was never designed for video. So it's not performing like the Canon lenses that are designed for video. So, but for photos, having that image stabilization really helped me nail the shot, especially at lower shutter speeds. So that does it for today's review vlog. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm just trying to put stuff out. If you're interested in buying the Sigma lens, please consider purchasing it with the link below. It really helps me out. I um, hope you enjoyed this different type of video. I'm going to be doing more and I'm going to be more consistent. I super promise about it. Uh, here on this channel, the Dave Altizer channel, not just Kinetika anymore. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to build an audience here and have a little bit more direct communication with you guys on this channel. So thank you so much for sticking around till the end. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time.